كان من المفترض أن يكون معنا في هذه الجلسة الخبير المالي ورئيس مجلس إدارة كابيتال أكسس الأستاذ وليد أبو سليمان ليحدثنا عن تقلبات أسعار النفط في الأسواق المالية العالمية ولكن لسبب صحي طارئ اعتذر عن عدم الحضور وسيلقي كلمته بالنيابة عنها الأستاذ زياد غانم أيضا من مؤسسة كابيتال أكسس فليتفضل Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear guests, uh, today I will be discussing the um, oil prices and the financial markets. Um, as much as the uh, petroleum industry is as vital uh, to several business sectors, as we all know in, uh, in this uh, diverse world, it is um, a major component as well uh, to social and uh, economic um, uh, factors that play uh, in the current uh, situation that we're facing and we constantly, constantly, I'm sorry, uh, have a lot of uncertainties, uncertainties in trying to predict where does uh, the price of oil eventually, eventually will uh, reach. Um, out of the most state-owned uh, companies, there exist almost uh, 16 of the largest uh, such companies. They process something uh, around 90% of, um, of the world reserves, and it keeps roughly like 6% for the rest of the countries uh, uh, in the world. And this is, this is a big number that we have to deal with because definitely there is a certain uh, level of leverage that gives uh, such um, uh, countries. Um, the revenues of oil producers and government surpluses uh, are therefore elevated and um, uh, the oil itself plays a main element in the geopolitical decision making of developed countries due to the unavoidable dependency on using such end product. Um, I'm going to use a couple of slides that we've, uh, we have prepared. OK, I'm going to go over the first one. Um, as you, most of you know, um, most of the reserves are uh, obviously available in the Middle East and KSA in Europe and in Iran. And um, the rest of the countries uh, have some minor reserves as well. Um, if we take into consideration the consumption of, the, of oil for the past 45 years, we can obviously see that this has increased from 31.8 million. And in the past 45 years, it has reached something like uh, 80 million barrels per day. Now, um, the top five countries that provide or produce 25% uh, of the daily production that we use every day is provided namely by KSA, by Saudi Arabia, by Iran, Qatar, Iran, and uh, Venezuela. Um, as you can see, most of the countries that import oil are Western Europe, USA, Japan, and China. And as for those who export are North Africa, namely Middle East, which is obvious, West Africa, and former Soviet Union. Now, um, the elevated level of production nowadays meets certain challenges. And this is obvious by the level of technology, investment, exploration of new territories, and the problem of depletion resulting in the increase of oil prices. The Gulf region retains more than 60% of oil in terms of reserves and exports. Depletion in Gulf countries becomes more disturbing since the Statistical Review of World Energy estimated oil reserves in these countries is to be completely exhausted somewhere around 2,130. I know maybe Mr. Daher doesn't really agree with me. We all hope that we keep on exploring and finding more and more oil, but what if not? I mean, fact of life is sometimes somewhere some coming generations will 
face this inevitable challenge and we, we are much better off acting and planning as of today rather than you know, uh, basing our judgment on so many uncertainties that are ahead of us. Uh, now this theory does not take into consideration the assumption of alternative energies usage and the way that uh, this reduces the dependability of oil and consequently should slow the process of the oil depletion. Now as for the consumption, namely emerging markets, Asia Pacific, Europe, North America and United States, China as well is uh, among the emerging markets and this is one of the world engines that's been consuming a big chunk, uh, basically the biggest chunk I would say. Um, if we look at the second slide, again all these facts and figures I would like to uh, throw your attention to that they are derived from Bloomberg. Um, we can obviously observe that Bahrain and Oman are the first two countries in the uh, Middle East and the GCC area to face uh, depletion challenges uh, by 2015 and 2065, this is maybe the earliest, and 2025, this is gas and oil reserves. Um, now I would move to defining the oil, the oil prices and the factors that uh, play their role in, um, in the financial markets with their correlation. If we go back to the basics of economics whereby we all know, we all agree that uh, supply and demand, they define the, the price of the underlying entity. However, oil has a different interesting story and this is because there are other parameters that that, uh, that are, um, play the role of defining such price and uh, this includes um, inflation, speculation, I would say hedging, um, of course using several derivatives, uh, financial derivatives in, in defining that price. Now, um, in terms of consumption, 32% is basically consumed by the European countries and 55% by the, percent by the Middle East. Um, this is just to throw some figures that might be interesting for you. Um, the demand follows certain economic cycles and uh, fluctuations. Consequently, such prices are just in the same direction. This demand for oil um, takes a certain direction and this can be, in a way, illustrated by the fluctuation in the equity markets. Now, if you compare the equity market fluctuation with the oil prices and for that reason we've picked the S&P 500 which is basically the biggest 500 companies listed on the S&P which is in the United States and the oil prices. You can see that most of the cases we do have a positive correlation however there are certain disruptions which are obviously translated in October 06 and in February 08 and this is primarily due to speculative positions taken in the market. Um, now, we find that, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, there is a positive correlation between the, the markets and the uh, prices of oil. In the same way, as inflation uh, picks up due to a weaker dollar, certain countries do have to intervene to maintain their uh, levels of revenue. And uh, this is clearly illustrated in the second slide, where you can see if we take, for instance, the dollar index, which is in the red color, and the, uh, the, the price of oil, you can easily observe that basically there is a negative correlation or decorrelation, I would say, especially lately with the increase in volatility in the markets. So, for such reasons, uh, oil producing uh, uh, governments, or I would say, or um, certain companies, do intervene to increase their prices just to compensate for the increase in their revenues. If we take in the inflation level and the oil price in 1983, for example, um, and we calculate the oil price taking into account the inflation effect, inflationary effect, we find that the oil price should be roughly around 58.48. But the speculative positions and hedging strategies I've mentioned earlier um, do uh, 
create certain disruptions and certain fluctuations in the uh, mean level of the end price of the oil. This leads us to consider that uh, oil is, for the time being, fairly evaluated in the financial markets. Now, uh, moving to the last slide, from what I've discussed so far is uh, on a fundamental basis. From a technical point of view, I would say from a technical analysis, if we throw a quick eye on, um, on the chart of the, um, of the oil, since uh, mid-June 2009, the market has been trending uh, upwards in an upward channel, forming a top after every 26% extension from the previous low. And this behavior, you can see that by almost in June, we can clearly observe that every 55 days, the market's reaching a bottom. Now, this is not, this is again, this is just, uh, you know, like um, indicative pattern and uh, so many other factors do play in, uh, in, in, in defining the final price. Um, taking into consideration such analysis, we can uh, see that this behavior will squeeze the market to make new highs where it will meet a resistance of 87, 89 zone. And this zone is limited by the upper channel uh, trend line plus the 26% extension from the previous low to the 50% Fibonacci retracement from the previous downtrend. I don't want to sound like I'm speaking Chinese, but this is basically part of the technical analysis we apply on the underlying. Now, uh, besides that, as I said earlier, for the past six, seven months, it is obvious that almost every 55 days, this market is reaching a bottom. Um, what happens, what will happen in the short term, again, from a technical point of view, it is still in an uptrend. It's always evident, and as we all know, the fundamentals have the upper hand. So, um, in conclusion, um, as an oil-based world economy, such as ours, uh, this, this doesn't need to, uh, to be discussed any further uh, f for the fact that we are in a way or another, we are facing the, de the depletion challenge. Um, according to the, to the uh, global reserves and production ratio, it estimates that the world reserves, as Mr. Daher has uh, mentioned earlier, it is in fact, will be depleted in the coming 40 to 45 years. Now, um, just to give you a very you know, uh, slight uh, piece of information, any slight change in, um, I would say, 10 to 15 percent in the demand or supply equation, this, this is just sufficient enough to wholly chatter an all dependent economy and, may, and will definitely have and cause disastrous consequences. Now, I don't mean to be so, so pessimistic. If we just say things as we are and as they are, um, our expectations, ex uh, including the oil pr about the oil prices, taking into consideration the uh, depletion challenge, um, the demand, as we have discussed, and finally the speculative effects, these all boil down to one obvious uh, conclusion. The price will keep going up, and uh, all dependent economies do have a big and serious challenges to face in the near future, and um, we all hope that Sometimes, somewhere, we will uh, start using renewable energy, nuclear energy, or certain green um, technologies to try to avoid such uh, consequences. Thank you very much.